from a secret location in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. You don't get me, huh? And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We are the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. And uh, I am looking at an email sent to me by a listener, and uh, because I don't want him to get in trouble, he didn't think ahead and ask me to keep his name out of it, but I'm going to do it. Because if his wife hears me reading this, it's to cause real problems for him. But um, here is the email from a listener. who says the following. My wife is a stay-at-home wife and has been for a few years. When I first met my wife, she looked perfect. Perfect waking up in the morning, or going to bed at night. I know you're probably saying that nobody looks perfect in the morning. But she would actually get up earlier than me to make sure she looked perfect when I would wake up. This had been the case for eight years. Till about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, she began wearing sweats around the house. Not sexy sweats but baggy ones, like the ones I would wear to go to the gym. Plus, her hair was not done up, and her usual way of looking perfect became a thing that was forgotten. I asked her, why? I asked her, what's wrong? Here's her answer. I feel like our love now transcends material looks. He said, at this point, I felt betrayed. I felt the woman I married was no longer going to resurface. I thought long and hard how to remedy this problem, and I came up with the perfect solution. For two weeks, I did not take her out, nor was I seen with her outside of our house. She finally asked me yesterday what was wrong, and I point blank told her that she looks like a slob. I didn't want to be seen with a woman who looks like crap. At this point, she did what all women in the typical scenario do, cried. She claimed I didn't love her. I didn't care for her feelings. The fact is that I met and married a hottie, and I would like to keep a hottie. Isn't that a word that chicks use to describe hot chicks? Do guys say that? Can you, what would the guys here at the studio see if I came in and said, guys, I was with a real hottie over the weekend? <laughs> Even if I was, I wouldn't say it like that. <laughs> the moment I let her become a slob, she will never return to the beautiful girl I know. I had to nip it in the bud. He says, you need to teach these youngsters to express their discontent at the point it happens. Guys wait years until they decide to take some action on their feelings uh, towards their unhappiness in a relationship. Nip it in the bud. And he signed it, but I'm not going to give his name. He's absolutely right. He is absolutely right. You can't let these things drag on. By the way, I'm guilty. I did the same thing. And I will tell you, uh, I'll tell you exactly what happened. I've discussed this on the air before, but I want to put it into this context. 
I was with a reasonably attractive woman who one day decided that her bedroom attire... Well, first of all, one time she came to bed naked, which was my fave, okay? Lingerie is fine and all that, but uh, what I like best is just some bare skin. I like it. So I was with somebody who used to do that. She used to just uh, hop into the sack, get under the covers, and get right up against me, and it was uh, fantastic. Then one day, for whatever reason... And you know how broads' minds work, you know? They're, they feel like they gain five pounds, or they pass their 30th or 35th birthday or something like that, or they saw a wrinkle or a gray hair or something. One day, she started coming to bed covered up, but did she wear something attractive? No. You know what business I'm in. I'm in the, not just the radio business, I'm in the advertising and marketing business. That's what I do. And at home, as you might imagine, you know, people in this business, we have all those tchotchkes around the house. You know, all the promotional tchotchkes over the years that people give us. I've got keychains for defunct radio stations like Pirate Radio. I've got coffee mugs with the names of radio stations who've gone and bit the dust years ago. I've got uh, beer koozies for defunct ad agencies. My house is full of this stuff. And um, in addition to all of that, I have got stacks and stacks, I mean drawers full, of T-shirts with logos, advertising products that at one time or another have advertised in my program, or defunct radio stations. That's right, lots of them. And uh, one day she decided she settled on a gray, like, you know, she was super thin, and it was this, like, 3XL uh, T-shirt, this gray T-shirt for Samuel Adams. I'll never forget it. She would walk around wearing nothing but this T-shirt for Samuel Adams. And, by the way, it she looked like she was swimming in this T-shirt. There was no form to her body at all. It was like a big tent draped over. You couldn't tell if she was wearing anything underneath or not. You couldn't see the form of her body, nothing. It was just a big tent draped over her body. And every night, that's what she wore to bed. No more coming to bed naked. No more coming to bed in anything sexy. Nothing. That was it. And, uh, you know, rather than complaining about it right away, I thought it was a phase. I thought maybe we had a, a, you know, a cold front coming into town and she needed to wear something to bed or something. But no, that became the nightly attire. By the way, she wore it for years, years and there came a time when I said to her, hey, wait a minute, you know, um, <laughs> you uh, you never get naked anymore. And she didn't think it was any big deal. And this T-shirt by now, I mean, Sam Adams is a great beer, okay? And I enjoy drinking it very much. But like any T-shirt, the T-shirt was starting to look pretty ratty after all that time. Didn't stop her from continuing to wear it. It was like a baby with a baby blanket. It was like your little puppy dog, uh, you know, uh, uh, pulling that uh, stuffed animal around that he tore the head off of years ago. You know, she just continued to wear the same ratty gray Samuel Adams T-shirt to bed every night. And I'm supposed to get aroused looking at this. I mean, you can see why they invent pills like Viagra and Cialis. I am supposed to become aroused at the sight of this. And after a while, she can't figure out why I have no interest in having sex with her. Like, I've completely lost interest. You need to step in that when somebody comes in dressed like that to your bedroom, or when somebody walks around the house dressed in sweats like this chick, you have to nip that stuff in the bud. You have to say, absolutely not, no way, not acceptable, change it. And you have to put up with that day of her crying and saying you don't love her, blah, blah, blah. You are looking out for the best interest of trying to keep whatever remaining arousal is there. Because let's face it, after you've seen that same body for a long time, you get bored. And that's the fact. We just read a story about this recently, about men married three to five years begin to have erectile dysfunction. That's what ultimately happens. They have erectile dysfunction. That's right. And so, personally, I think uh, my way works a lot better to prevent ED 
stay U.M., unmarried. <laughs> and you would be amazed. <laughs> you will have, you will be aroused at the sight of anything because it's all new, all the time. It's always good. ED is for guys who, uh, you know, have the same exact thing to look at all the time. Or worse, something that gets fatter, older, or the T-shirt gets rattier and rattier as time goes on. Those are the guys with ED. ED is, 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 ED is not a syndrome. It's not a disease. You shouldn't have to take it. If you have to take a pill, if you have to take a goddamn pill to get aroused, you need to change it up. You do. That's it. Jesus. Now I'm wondering if you are in a situation like this. Are you with somebody who was hot, hot, hot? And now you come home like the guy writes in and you're looking at somebody who looks like crap. They don't wear makeup. Their hair is a mess. They dress like crap. You're embarrassed to be seen with them. Do you know how many times I see a guy... When we were in uh, spending time in places like uh, Portland and Seattle, we would see a lot of this. You would see a guy who is in reasonably great shape. <laughs> you know, a guy who's, uh, you know, maybe late 30s, maybe he's 40 years old, looks great. And there he is with that that big ball of goo that he walks around with, who can barely fit her engagement ring on that middle finger anymore. And And these two are walking around. She looks like his mother. But she's really the wife. Now, I know I'm talking to some people out there right now. This is like coming right at your heart, right? You're, feel, you're feeling my blade as it's beginning to plunge into you, right? Because the, I'm talking about you. And you don't know what to do about it. You're, you don't have the balls to tell her, hey, this is going to have to change, or I can't stay here anymore. You don't have the balls to do it. So you continue to tolerate being with somebody who just is just one big slob or maybe a little skinny slob. No matter. Or maybe she just doesn't look as good as she used to. She just doesn't take care of herself. Keep in mind, the reason you agreed to sign up for this and give up half of everything you own or more in the event of a failure is because you were expecting to have the person you married. But you don't have that anymore. You've got a woman who just does not get it done for you. You don't feel aroused. You're embarrassed by her. Are you with somebody like this right now? There you are, kissing some 60 year old guy. How disgusting. You slut. I like a I'm not a slut, but thank you. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Come on, are you with somebody you're embarrassed about? Tell me, tell me, tell me. 1-800-5800-866, Sarah. On the Tom Likas Show, hello. Oh, hi, Tom. Oh, hi. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say I'm so embarrassed, but... um. It does go both ways with uh, what you're talking about, uh, personal hygiene. Um, I've been with the same person for 10 years, and he's awesome. And we've been married for about a year and a half. But uh, maybe about two years ago, he sort of uh, bathed less and less. So first it would be every other day, and that's that's fine. That's acceptable. You're not too grungy. But then it would be three and four days, never on the weekends because he didn't have to go to work. <laughs> so no sex, none after that. You mean you refused to have sex with him? Yeah. Hell yeah. Are you joking? <laughs> like, you smell and you're greasy and you're all these things. Why Why should I have to get lingerie and dress up and be sexy and do all these things if uh, soap doesn't touch the skin? doesn't seem So hard. why even stay together? Um, well, <laughs> I don't know so much about marriage. Marriage was, um, we've been together for 10 years. So um, marriage was really just like a formality. It was cool to have a big party. Uh, get on each other's insurance, but other than that, I mean, I don't think marriage is a permanent uh, state. So, so why be in it? Um, well, it's going to sound so cheesy, and you're going to rip me apart. <laughs> but uh, really, he is my best friend. 
Um, so yeah, well, my actually, best my best friend. I'm not married to him. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's true. That's something we've we've actually been talking about. That really, you know, if you take sex out of the equation, then uh, what really is the point? But I still have faith that eventually he will possibly bathe regularly. <laughs> and uh, I, 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 you're at a you're at a very bad stalemate, dear. I'm sorry, what? You are at a very bad stalemate. Yes. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> We've kind of uh, hit hit a brick wall, but uh, you know, maybe he'll find another reason to bait or something. It's it's just odd. Anyway, uh, how can you accept that? Well, I I wouldn't call it accepting it completely. Being that yes, you have it, but you've accepted it to an extent. Yeah, I guess um, not to an extent. You're 25 years old, and you don't have sex at an age when you should be sexually active. Yeah. Yeah. You're married. Did you intend to have children? Um, no, I don't. I don't think so. I'm, right. I don't really want to be an incubator for another. That's person. fine. I agree with you. I don't. I feel the same way you do about that. But the point is, <laughs> how, how many 25 year old females are not having sex? That's true. And then I think about it like, well, I've had sex regularly for 10 years, and up until this point, it's been very good. Um, so, you know, I still got to have a little uh, light at the end of the tunnel. I figure I would give it probably about, you know, six months to a year. Yeah, but do you, do you understand out. if you have to, look, if you're using those Shamu tactics to try to train your husband to do what you want? Oh, no, 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 no. They're not Shamu. I mean, I tell him with words. I say, hey, this is what's going on. Like, okay, let me give an example. Um, I have a thyroid problem like so many girls do. I stopped taking my meds because I said screw to the, you know, screw it to the doctors. But I gained weight, and I hadn't noticed it because it happened so slowly. So eventually our sex, you know, kind of diminished. And I said, you know, what, you know, what's going on with this? And he said, well, I don't want to tell you, but, you know, you're, you're kind of getting bigger and, and you look good with weight, just not this much. So I did the girl thing. I cried, but I wasn't angry with him for telling me because humans are humans. We biologically need to have sex. So um, I said, okay, let me get back on my pills. I'll lose the weight. I lost it in two months. So, I mean, things do happen when you're with somebody for a while and they can change. So with his situation, I kind of see it... Um, you know, I'm juxtaposing the two situations, so... I, I, frankly, I think that way of solving problems is troublesome. I've been divorced four times, dear. I've been there. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, you, when you run into a problem, you just kind of take off, or...? Uh, if you run into a stalemate, and the yeah. two of you have a basic disagreement that's not going away about something important... Yeah. It's time to go. Oh, that's kind of depressing. <laughs> that's how it is. Yeah. 25-year-old woman does not go without sex. Yeah, that's true. I think it's more interesting that he doesn't need it very much. Well, um, we're not talking about him now. I'm talking about you. Oh, yeah. Clearly, you don't need it very much. Well, no, that's not true. I, I've always had a, a higher sex drive than him. It's always been sort of this imbalance. But, you know, we um, compromise. And I know what you have to say about compromising. Right. <laughs> but uh, we're not all like you. <laughs> so some of us can deal with a little compromise. Yeah, but look at your compromise. You're married one year, and you're already not having sex with your filthy, disgusting husband. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, you're you you you're sure teaching people like me a lesson. <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> Boy, oh, I wish I was happily married like you. To, to, to be fair, the rest of it is, is amazing. We play well, that's, together that's play. wonderful. Uh, you know, that's yeah. great having a roommate, dear. But uh, this yeah, this is not a roommate. You married him. Yeah, that is. And, and you are immature. If if you were, if you got married in order to have a party, no, that wasn't that. Was, you that was said that. No, I said it was a good reason to have a party. No, it's. Oh, well, put it this way. Uh, you don't. You. By the way, you didn't say it that way. You said it the other way around. Oh, what do you mean? That you didn't need to be married, but it was a good excuse to have a party. Oh, yeah, well, to 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 be honest, um, after we got married, I realized sort of how, not silly, but how um, unimportant a piece of paper is, how, import, how unimportant that contract is. Well, um, well, because you finally found out what every married person knows, that is when you get married, nothing changes. Oh, oh to, I was not expecting anything to change. Um, and actually, I would have preferred it if nothing changed. Um, so why, let me go back to what we were talking about in minute one of this call. Why get married? 
That is a good question. If it's not for financial reasons, um, insurance or whatever else, then I really don't see the reason. I know there's a lot of religious people out there, and they, you know, want to get married to that whole thing. So you I got married to somebody. Are. You don't know why you got married to them. You're not having sex with them. The guy's a filthy slob. And, and essentially what he is is he's a roommate who's kind of fun to hang out with now and then. Yeah. So why be married? You can be friends with him. And then have a really hot sexual relationship with somebody who loves you. Yeah, that is true. Well, that's for another talk then. <laughs> that will be brought up. Holy cow. But it was really nice talking with you. I enjoy your show. You're a strange cat. And I'm glad you have all the money. Well, thank you. See, I'm the strange one. She's 25. She's married. She's not having any sex with her husband because he doesn't bathe. We should all be happy like that. Gee, Tom, why aren't you getting married again? <laughs> well, you know, I I really could use to be happy like, like them. What a happy couple. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Frank on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Frank. How's it going, man? Just doing a radio show, right? Yeah, exactly. Getting paid. <laughs> That's right. All right, dude. About three years ago, uh, I got married about three years ago, and uh, why'd you do? Wife, wait, wait, wait. Why'd you do that? Well, because it was the right thing to do. We were we we were both really in love. We've known each other for about fifteen years. And you knocked her up? No. No. No, no, no. We got married first, and then we had a, a baby right after. You know, it was all planned out. Everything was good. Our, our marriage is really good. You know, it's just. About uh, well, if it was that good, you wouldn't be calling in. Oh no! I mean, what I have to say is not critical. It's nothing horrible. I actually took care of the problem. You know, I stood up and I took care of it. And, and because she's a really good woman, honestly, just uh, about a year ago, she started uh, wearing. She would wear a shirt with uh, holes in them for some reason. She wanted to go out with like that, and I told her she was going was, out like that with shirts with holes in them. Yeah, and I thought it was absolutely ridiculous, and uh, I, you know, I brought it up, and I, I confronted her about it, and I said, hey, if you don't stop this, I'm just going to throw this away, and she did stop. Eventually, you know, she, she did stop, took it too much, but she was like, oh, okay, I understand, because, you know, we're not poor, we're not rich, but we make enough money to where we don't need to be going out like that. It's embarrassing. Why was she going out like that? You know what? I have, I really don't know. She stopped it, so you know what? That was the end of it. <laughs> So that was one thing we took care of. And then about six months ago, she started, because uh, she gets home er earlier than me, uh, I come home and she's I come home and she's wearing her uh, pajama bottoms in a, in a plain T-shirt. And that was kind of weird for, you know, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And I said, now, what is going on now? <laughs> and she's like, oh, I just feel comfortable like this. And I was like, well, it's not time to go to sleep, so take that off. Now, she still does that every once in a while, but it's, again, not that much of a critical thing. She is a good person. so. Well, if she had respect for you, she wouldn't be doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, like it, it, it's been getting better. but So uh, she's a good person who doesn't have respect for you. <laughs> once in a while. It is getting better, but, I mean, it, it's, it's almost out of her system now. I don't know why she does it, though. It's, it's because she never wanted to dress up. Uh, she only tarted herself up to meet a sucker who would sign the contract, and you did. And, and so now she got what she wanted. She's going back to where she really wants to be, which is being a slob. Right. But like I said, it's been getting better. But the point I'm trying to make is if you stand up and, you know, you know, say your word out there, if she respects you, she'll do it. And again, like, like I said, it's been getting a lot better. It has been getting better. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's almost out of her system completely, 99%, I'd say. All right, we'll see. But the point is, stand up for yourself, you know, be a man, grow a pair, and uh, if she loves you, and you know, she'll do it. If not, you know, time to move on, man. It's not worth it to sit there and fight about. You know, if you never got married, she never would have done it. <laughs> True. Hey, thanks, Tom. Can By you the way, how many years were you dating her before you married her? Uh, we've been together now for, well, for about 15 years. What, since you were 12? Yeah, I've known her since we were kids. <laughs> no, no. When did you start dating her? Banging uh, uh, her? I'd say high school. So you were 14? Yeah, it was uh, 14, 15, but we've known each other since 15. we were 15. 
So for nine years, she never did this. No, she was always, you know, she's a college grad. She has a really good job, and, you know, everything was... So for nine years, she didn't do this. And then when you gave her what she wanted and you married her, that's the respect. That's the payback you get. Right. It sucks. <laughs> it does. It sucks. Well, oh. thank you very much, Tom, for the call. And can you please blow me up? Yes, I can. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. If I'm blessed enough to meet my soulmate, why would I go and blow it with marriage? It's the Tom Likes Show. It's the Tom Likes Show. I'm 1-800-5800-TOM. You know, I'm just going to tell you about this, and I'm not going to run the risk of elaborating. Is it okay if I just tell you about something and then not elaborate on it? I'll let your, you can let your imagination run wild. I'm not making this up. I have a, a press release here asking me to book the chairman of something called the Black Shopping Channel. That space was for you to fill in your response to that. What's so funny, Art? It's the Black Shopping Channel. Good one. Somebody in the front seat of their car just made a very funny joke. One that can't be told on the air. So, again, I'm not making it up. There is something called the Black Shopping Channel. Get together with your friends and discuss, would you? Because you know I can't talk about that. Are you sitting there making a list of topics I could do about the Black Shopping Channel? Shame on you. No, I'm not going to do a show about what items they sell on the Black Shopping Channel. I'm not doing it. That would be wrong. I know you'd like me to do that show, but I'm not doing it. I'm just not going to go there. No. Ask your own friends whatever you want to ask them, but I'm not asking those questions on the air. It's the Black Shopping Channel, and it's coming to your cable system. one 800 800 tom Art thinks this is funny, the Black Shopping Channel. You're laughing. I think you're, I see you laughing over there. I can see it in your eyes. You're over there trying to figure out what topics I could do with that information. I wouldn't go near it. No way. Think I am Michael Richards? Absolutely not. That's right. We all bleed red. Indeed we do. Yeah, I just thought you might want to know there is something called the Black Shopping Channel. one 800 I just want to give you some time to think about that, mull it over. one 800 because I can't say anything about it except that it exists. That's all I'm going to say. 
Now, see, Dean now is fielding calls from people who have what they consider to be pithy comments about the Black Shopping Channel. We're not putting those on. Nope. Not to, no, four calls now. He's gotten four calls in a row from people trying to make comments about that. We're no, you're not going to get on the air. Just stop calling. That will not be a subject for discussion here. If somebody wants to put on the Black Shopping Channel, more power to them. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Now, Dean thinks probably that I'm making this up, and I'm sure he's Googling it right now. All right, to your telephone calls, it's Scott on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Tom. Scott. Great to talk to you. First time, long time. Thank you. I like the way you paint people into a corner with straight logic. It's so easy. I know. You're one of the more intelligent people on the radio. You make my drive a lot easier. Thank you. I have a question for you about uh, marriage. Uh, I know you've been married four times. I'm just wondering where along that way you started to realize that it wasn't for you. Because um, you must have started to pick it up around the third or the fourth. Actually, I would say it was the third. What happened? The third time I got married, I got married to hurt wife number two. That is not fair to wife number three. But I did that, and I'm just being honest. Yeah. And it lasted uh, a year. And the fourth time I got married, I got married essentially because uh, I was with someone who insisted on being married. And my attitude about it was as long as she, she signs a prenup, I'm not taking any risk, fine, poof, we're married. She signed the prenup, poof, we got married, we stayed together for 10 years. We got divorced, and the prenup uh, was a good thing. That was it. But really, what's the point? Yeah, I know at some point you started to develop your idea for, you know, this radio show. And I think all of your uh, experiences sort of congealed, and now, uh, now you have a better idea of what's going on. Well, I think uh, we are all works in progress. And I believe that, uh, you know, I've been on the radio in L.A. this summer. It'll be 20 years since I first came on, I came on the air in L.A. And uh, a lot of people have heard me evolve, metamorphose, grow, change. You've changed my opinion about basic things. And um, I do believe that, uh, you know, none of us has all the answers. But the more experiences we have... If we pay attention to what's happened to us and absorb that and take responsibility for the mistakes we've made, I think uh, we do improve and we do have more of the answers after. Yeah, it's not enough to make mistakes. You have to make mistakes and then say, I made a mistake. I take responsibility for it. You'll never hear me on the air attacking any of my ex-wives. You will never hear me saying that... Uh, um, you know, it was their fault we got divorced or it ruined my life or anything like that. You know why? I chose these women. And if they were not right for me, it's because I made bad choices. It's not their fault. By having that attitude, I have learned from my mistakes. More of us need to take responsibility and stop blaming the exes and stop blaming our parents and stop blaming our neighbors and stop blaming other people. Yeah, I think not um, not getting married after that experience is the kind of the ultimate example of taking responsibility for your actions. I think so. Yeah. Well, thanks for the insight. I'm here to help, Scott. Appreciate the call. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. This is Leticia on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, I just had a question regarding your comment regarding a black shopping channel. Yes. Um, what was so funny about that to you? Oh, I don't think anything's funny about it. Do you have a problem with it? Oh, no, God bless America. I think uh, anybody wants to start a business, what a great place to do it. So would you shop on that particular channel? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what they sell. 
Well, what if they sell products that you're interested in? I, I I wouldn't have any problem with it. I uh, based on the name of it, I would imagine the target audience is black people. Well, BET does, just doesn't target black people. Oh, they do target black people. Anybody can not only black people. Oh yeah, they... I have a lot of friends of different races. I watch that channel. No, 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 no. The fact that people, for example, this show targets men. You listen to this show, but we're not targeting you. Do you understand the difference between listening to the show and being our target? Yes. All right. It's the same thing with any medium. You know, uh, Grey's Anatomy targets women. Okay. Uh, there are guys who watch it, but the show is written for and about women. Okay. Well, so the target is women. So when you call something the Black Shopping Channel, I am assuming, like any good business, when you give it a name, you're telling the, the target audience that it's for them. Okay. I, I talk about this show being for guys all the time. Yet you listen to it. I just barely started listening to you. All right, but you didn't turn it off. No, I didn't turn it off because I think your uh, topics are pretty interesting. You have a lot to say, but you're a little rude sometimes. That's because the show is not targeting women. It's targeting men, and men like a rude show. Not all men. Not, well, not all men, but a preponderance of men. You see, I'm in the broadcasting business. Nobody has 100% of the audience. Nobody. Nobody. The idea is to get the largest percentage of the audience that you can get. So there are some sensitive men who watch Grey's Anatomy and they go to gay discos and find that's fine. So you're saying guys that watch Grey's Anatomy are, are gay? That's not true. That, my opinion is that most who do probably are. No, that's not and true. And there's nothing wrong with that. Well, you know about the show, so have you... I don't know I don't know a lot of straight men who voluntarily watch Grey's Anatomy. Okay, then how do you know about the show? Have you ever watched Because the, the promos are on television during shows I do watch. <laughs> oh my goodness. So the men who watch that show are gay. My opinion is that they're gay, or at the very least, very sensitive. Very sensitive. Okay, yes. I like very sensitive. With a capital T-H. <laughs> I think you should soften Say up your show a little bit for women. I'm sorry. I think you should soften up your show a little bit. But for but women but for women. but then then a lot of the men will be alienated and we will lose our target audience. No, not all of your audience. Uh, darling, it's not a matter of all of it. I don't want to lose a plurality of it or a majority of it. Uh, the fact that I won't lose all of it that's that's not good enough. I have to keep the vast majority of it, and I do that by doing the show the way I do it. What about once a week for women? No, uh, radio doesn't work that way. You know, you've got one station that's uh, Mexican and one station that's black and one station that plays 80s music and one station that plays 90s music. And you got one station, I mean, the, the one station plays jazz. Uh, they don't say, well, once a week we'll play Zydeco. Well, I'm saying some stations play different music. It's not just one. Those are th those stations are not in the top fifty radio stations. One hundred two point seven Kiss FM. No, no, no. Good. They they play the 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 twenty most popular songs right now, whatever they are. I think you should try it one week and do it for women. Uh no, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. There there is already plenty of talk shows for women. Just turn on the TV any day of the week. Well, we don't have any radio shows. Well, you know, if you get satellite radio, you've got Oprah and her good friend Gail King. They're on all the time, uh, blathering on. Blathering on. Blathering on about women stuff, chick stuff. Well, you should do it one day and just hear... Well, why would I want to do it? There's already other people doing that. I think you should try it just one day. Why would I want to do that? Do a me show. And my friend will come down and we'll host it for the day, and you'll see. Yeah, you, you have to come down and do a topless. You come down and do a topless. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Hang on a second, Letitia. Erica, okay. what did you want to say to Letitia? I have to say to Letitia, why do women always call it to this show and act like everything is just black and white? Words to live by, Erica. Thanks, girls, for the calls. The Tom Likas Show.